While governments at the UN Climate Change Conference in Warsaw still struggle to agree a common policy to address climate change, the 48 least developed countries are taking a step forward. Last week, they finalized a comprehensive set of plans to deal with the impacts of climate change. They first identified their adaptation needs and consequently formulated concrete projects to meet them. The least developed countries are the most vulnerable countries in the world. They're designated by the General Assembly to be the poorest and those in need of m most attention from the international community. Our process, the UNFCCC process, have, has given them a lot of attention over the past 10 or even 12, 13 years by creating what is known as the process of preparing and implementing national adaptation programs of action. We call them NAPAs. This process has enabled all of the LDCs to prepare and assess their urgent needs relating to adaptation. And the last of these countries, which was Equatorial Guinea, has just submitted its NAPA last week. And now we can say that the process has concluded successfully. All LDCs have assessed their vulnerabilities, their urgent vulnerabilities, and know what needs to be done to address these urgent vulnerabilities and they are now embarking on implementing them. And these include very, very useful and effective projects such as um, the lowering of a glacial lake in Bhutan, for example, which has already uh, been, uh, been implemented very well, or the raising of, of roads in flood-prone areas in Bangladesh. Um, and now that these countries have effectively concluded this uh, process and identified their urgent needs, they are embarking on a new one which is also supported by the UNFCCC to prepare for their medium and long-term adaptation needs. That process is called the National Adaptation Plans process. As climate change impacts become more serious every year, many now look at a bottom-up approach with projects being designed and targeted at a national level as a possibly more effective way to tackle the problem. But the issue of funding remains. So some of the basic requirements are not even in place and uh, national adaptation plans are supposed to be a tool to help, for instance in agriculture or instance in coastal zone management uh, in relation to risk, um, uh, disaster risk uh, reduction and prevention and so on. So there are many, many aspects that need to be done. But uh, one is the tools that are needed for this, which is, a, as I said, the national adaptation plans are a good tool. And the developing countries, some of the LDCs have even put in place uh, national, the NAPAS, the National Action, the National Programs of Action for an Adaptation. Apparently they did it, but there's no money to implement it. So you can see that finance is really the key. It's no point having these plans with no finance on the table. Uh, everybody recognizes that adaptation is, uh, uh, requires uh, local specific responses and the involvement of local communities and peoples are absolutely key. So in this sense, I think that uh, there's a lot of opportunity for indigenous knowledge, for local community involvement, for lots of stakeholder participation, um, and uh, governments uh, being able to work together